Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we are here to talk about packaging the free software web for the end user. So first I want to say a few things on DevConf 5, DevConf 15. I love it. So I know it's very hard work to organize and that's why I will probably change the subject whenever you mention doing one in Brazil. But yeah, the, the conference is amazing. The, the venue is really nice and the food's nice. The people that work here are nice as well. Having so many kids and families here is awesome. i not a parent in, yet, but in the, so I don't have a, an idea, any idea on how hard it is to actually bring kids here. But it definitely uh, is, a, is an extra encouragement to actually have kids and be able, be, be able to bring them to DevConf. And also if you hack too much at night, you might <coughs> miss all the morning briefings and actually uh, win a raffle and not be re here to take your prize. And therefore lose it. So now back to the topic. Uh, the problem we are discussing here is that uh, we want the web to be more distributed and more federated and less centralized. Today we have a really concerning problem that more, more and more people are just relying on centralized services, which we all know contribute to mass surveillance and other issues that we should care about. But on the other hand, server-side applications are complicated. Uh, for technical people, it's either too difficult or too boring to set up stuff, so you end up doing uh, lots of work or boring work that you shouldn't need to do. And then that's why in the last years we had a boom of uh, configuration management stuff, so you don't have to repeat yourself every time you want to configure something that lots of people do every time. And that also means that uh, non-technical people can do it at all. So they end up depending on either centralized services or if they can find a provider that's not one, one of the big ones, they, they are stuck having to uh, do it for themselves or finding one that will do it. And we actually have quite a bit of the free software web in Debian already. So if you search, this is, was a few months ago, so when I searched the web there, we have more than 3,500 packages with web somewhere in the fields that up to cache searches. And we have actually 92 packages that <laughs> ship, ship files under the Apache configuration directory. And that's excluding Apache itself and uh, Apache moduli, modules. And also, I, I know of several web, web applications that don't do it at all, like Redmine, which I maintain, doesn't ship anything by, def by default under the Apache configuration directory. So I think we are quite good at packaging, but then that brings the, pack the question of what actually is packaging? Is just providing the source code enough? Are we doing enough for our users? So, uh, for, for instance, we have no standard at the moment for how a web application should be packaged and what goes where and what are the minimal things that a web application has to provide. You also have, have uh, more complicated problems like you have cross package configuration that there are some configurations that doesn't, don't belong on a specific package so you don't have a place to put them. You, you also have databases. Databases are complicated. And then you, you have DNS, you have email, you have even more stuff than there, than there is there in the slide, like uh, SSL and other things. So to talk about a little, a little bit about my history of this topic. So uh, since last DevConf, when I watched Zach's talk on the future, uh, on the role of Debian, on the future of uh, software freedom, and this was one of his points of the, the move toward dumb devices that only access network services. And then we, we go back to the beginning when we were 
in the hands of uh, proprietary software providers, and now we are in the hands of proprietary service providers. So if people can't control the server side, then they are, in, they are being controlled. And then on FOSDEM, uh, beginning of this year, there was Lucas's talk on, on whether distributions are really a solved problem and there is no exciting work to do on them. And at the same the, uh, distribution dev room, there's the talk, talk by uh, Deb Nicholson and Christopher Weber. They, are, they work on uh, media gobbling and they were talking about issues that come with making web applications easily available for users. And it's uh, definitely not uh, a, an easy thing. And also th there was a thread a few months back uh, on Debian project about this new wave of people retiring from Debian and some people argued that maybe uh, distributions are a solved problem, there's packaging solved. And then there's, there was a very nice discussion on that topic and I, I would say that if you are looking for cool stuff to do, you can read that thread. I think some of the items may be taken already, but there are still several nice ideas there. So uh, distributions are most definitely not a uh, solved problem, and there's, we still have a big role to play in the free software ecosystem. So I, I started hacking on a proof of concept implementation of uh, making web applications easily available for users on back in February. Then uh, I went uh, to the Ruby Sprint in Paris and was able to attend the mini DevConf in France in Lyon in April. So I did a presentation with very half ideas of uh, how this was going to work and uh, didn't have the courage to do a live demo there yet. But I, I got very useful feedback and, and this helped me to improve the concept in the, in the design of the application. Then I, I got a, a GSOC slot for this year. Got uh, more submissions that I wanted to, or 10 students, so you have to uh, actually rank students is a horrible thing to do. And I had to do it, so I plan to change my strategy on getting Summer of Code submissions for next year. Then uh, uh, Thiago was the, uh, the student I selected. He's uh, from the software engineering program at uh, University of Brasilia. And he did, uh, did a very nice work and with a project that's completely in flux. I was changing things all the time and telling him to redo the things he had already done and the, he never lost his school at and did a very nice work. And then comes DebCon 15. Uh, lots of hacking. The Quiet Hack Labs are awesome for that. So I was a few days locked in the Quiet Hack Lab. And then I had to stop in the middle to be able to remove the embedded copy of jQuery I had in my code. So I went there and in practice, I think I adopted jQuery now. And I don't know yet how crazy <laughs> is it is to do that, but let's see what happens. And then I went back to hacking. And today you actually see a live demo. It might break, it might not break, but uh, let's see. So the goal of the project is to automate the configuration of web applications that are already packaged in Debian. So we are not uh, we are not uh, disconsidering all the work that Debian maintainers have made. So there are at least almost 100 applications, and we we don't want to waste that. So we are, we are just making sure that that work will be able to get to the end users without uh, large effort from their part. So in a, an alternative version of the goal is to allow everyone to have a, their own Debian server in a secure and maintainable way. So in, in a way that's repeatable and can be in where upgrades can be handled in a sensible manner as we usually are able to do in Debian. So it's 
another uh, variant of world domination. So uh, the application I'm working on is called Shack. It stands for self-hosting application kit, but I will accept other meanings that are cool enough. Uh, I have a repository on GitLab, and if you don't want to go to GitLab, you can also uh, check out from git.debian.org on the My User account. Of course, there are other people looking at this as well. So there is Sandstorm, Why You Know Host, and BitchNemi. They all have nice ideas, and I look at them, and I plan to try to implement some of them, but they all reinvent packaging in some way or another, so that's not what I think we should be doing at this point. I mean, I if they succeed, that's, also, that's awesome, but I think in Debian we can do better. So about, about the design, uh, of course, we are using official Debian packages with a configuration management layer on top. So the, the idea is that this configuration management will do the minimal amount of work necessary to have a great out-of-the-box experience and also helps, uh, help us figure out which changes we have to push into the packages so that they work even better for people who are not using it. So I, I'm going to talk about uh, this a little bit more after. So uh, the, the idea is to have a new abstraction, which I'm calling an application, that's one layer above the packages. And an application can be about just one or several packages. So if you, if you want an email server, for instance, you want an MTA, you want an MGA, you want an IMAP server, and whatnot. So you usually don't think of those things as separate things. You, you just want an email server that works. So the, the email application check just make sure all of those are configured to work together in, in a reasonable way. And I was, I, I was thinking if it made sense of, uh, to, to mention applications that require zero packages, but then e even if you want a static website, you, you need S SSH or sync to copy stuff into the server. So it usually be one or more packages. Uh, I, I'm working to have a completely decoupled uh, business logic from the UI, so you, have, you, you, you can have multiple UIs. So uh, we already have a command line interface for those who like the command line, but uh, it's uh, it also useful for automated testing, so you can call the command line interface and test that stuff happens in the right way. Uh, and also, uh, it's, a, it's a requirement to have humans to, to use it to have a nice graphical user interface. Then we have some assumptions on packages. So they, they should do most of their stuff right. Uh, not automating the website configuration is more or less OK, because if you want to make it reproducible, you want to have a uniform way of configuring every application anyway. So yeah, not, not with the web server stuff is probably fine. But the application should handle their own upgrades. So there is no better place to handle a package upgrade other than the package itself. So uh, dbconfig common helps a lot of this. Uh, it's very nice that the PoGivers actually took over dbconfig common lately and fixed lots of, lots of bugs. It was abandoned for a few years, I think. And also, it's, uh, we, we should take Thanks, Sean Finney, for doing the initial work and maintaining it for several years. So dbconfig common is now maintained, and if you're not using it, you should. Uh, then there is a few nice to have. So ideally, you want packages to support multiple instances. So running multiple independent sites from the same code base, and we will patch stuff for that. So uh, Thiago actually uh, wrote a patch uh, based on some upstream discussions for on cloud, which is going to be present in the next uh, in the next version in Debian, the next upstream version. So we, you can now have uh, two on cloud instances on the same server with the same code base, because what upstream said was, oh, if you want two on cloud servers, you copy the code two times and go from there. Of course, we are not doing that. And also, if applications cannot be crap, it would be nice also. Uh, the data model we, are, we have is uh, 
So we have these applications, which are the, the things that users see as useful things to have. Users don't think in terms of packages. And then an application is implemented by a cookbook. So I'm using the chef terminology because that's what we are using. But the idea is that the cookbook is the code that makes the application be installed and be configured in the correct way. And the application is data, is the user data. So I want this uh, website here using a WordPress with this domain name. And then of course, there is the code to handle that, but that's uh, application data. In the, they are completely separate, and you can uh, make backup schemes to make sure you don't lose it. And then you can specify inputs in the cookbook. So what are the parameters that the user can provide here? The host name, the path, the, I mean, th there are other examples in other applications, like if you have a static website, we have which user should be able to write to those files. And then the cookbook can, can spy, specify that in a way that you don't need any change at all in the code base to display those, uh, those fields to the user and have uh, the user input, the data in the user, user interface. So my idea is that we'll be able to add support for new applications just, for, just by writing new chef cookbooks. And then if you are using packages, the cookbooks are mostly trivial. It's just please install the package, please create this configuration file with these contents, and please configure the web server this way, and then reload the web server and you are done, and then we have a working package. And then again, the idea is that uh, the chef recipes must be as simple as you can, and you have to push everything that's application specific into the application. The, the architecture is, there's a repository of data which uh, stores the, the user data, user data on applications. You can uh, use the, both a command line interface and a web interface. The command line interface will write to that directory, to the repository, and then uh, invoke the configuration management layer to do its thing to the system. And for the web interface, we have a, uh, privilege separation there, so you, you have the actual web interface who writes the repository, and then you have a configuration daemon that listens to changes to the repository and applies the changes locally. And then you can specify uh, access control policies there, so y you can let some users uh, create stuff but not have their changes apply automatically, and then you can have a, like an administrator user that comes later and reviews the changes and, and accepts that configuration to be applied to the server. So the, the code is, is written in Ruby. Uh, there's no Rails, so dependency management is way easier. Uh, we are using Chef for configuration management. I'm not really happy with it because it takes five seconds to do nothing. So if you just reapply your current configuration, it takes few seconds to figure out that there is nothing to do, so maybe uh, I would consider changing it for, other f for some other thing. And also I try to automate most of the tests that I can. So the current state of the project is, is in alpha stage, so uh, I have a base system implemented, already working, so we, you can install and update applications. We have both a command line and a web interface. Uh, removing application doesn't quite work yet, so uh, if you are testing this, please make sure you do it in a throwaway machine, so a VM or a container or whatever, so that you can later remove, just throw it away. We, we'll be able to remove applications, but we are just not there yet. Uh, we have a uh, few applications already available, basically uh, static site, which is the one I started first to make sure I got uh, most of the things right without having to worry about databases and all, all this stuff. Uh, so it already works, so if, if you want a uh, static site, you just create there, it's ready, it gives you a directory where you can rsync the files to and it's live. And then Thiago added support for WordPress on cloud. He also wrote the email, uh, the email application. Of course, uh, the email one needs uh, to be looked into because, uh, as you all know, running email servers is not easy. So we will need help on that to configure all that, that uh, the Kim, anti spam, and whatever, all the kinds of stuff. It, uh, we are also working to have uh, encryption by default. 
So everything is encrypted out of the box. Uh, also done by Tiago. We are using self-signed certificates for now, and uh, we are looking forward for, to have solutions, uh, viable solutions for that. So to automate having proper certificates, either by the CA cartel or from any other solution that you can find. I mean, I don't think we have an easy solution out of the CA cartel in the short term, so you probably have to go with Let's Encrypt anyway. Now, the dangerous part. Let's see. So we have here the web interface. Um, I don't have anything yet. Can you all see that? I mean, you won't be able to read the text, but uh, trust me, that's all sensible stuff written there. I think I can, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So then it, it will hear, list here the, the applications that are available. Uh, we'll, have, we'll add icons and all kinds of eye candy there, but uh, we're just not there yet. So we, you can install, f let's go for the easiest one, static website. So you, you tell here the host name, which user should be able to write to the, file, to the static website. And then it's applying the configuration on the background, and then configuration applied. And you can just open here, accept the self-signed certificate, and then you have uh, your static website ready to push. You can copy this rsync command line here, and and then you have a website online. I, and the, the awesome thing is that the, the easiest thing to put online is actually the most performant website you can have. It's web static files. Uh, we can look at the command line also. Let me go back here. Just logging into the VM here. I guess white background is better. So uh, I don't have enough columns to show the table, but it uh, uh, automatically invokes the, your pager if you don't have enough columns. Uh, so that not here you have the, the status of the application. You have a status here which says whether this configuration is already applied to the server or not. Now you have the link, you can go from here and, and click and access. You can also install stuff from here. You can also install stuff from the command line. It uses just the, the very same code that uses, is used in the other places. Uh, now you have two applications, both up to date, and you can click here and go to the, wow. Ah, there's a typo there. So I can sh also demo uh, updating the application. I can just, I did a type on the domain name, I can just change it, localhost, right. Then to apply again, Yeah, three seconds, not as slow as yesterday. And then you can list the applications here, and then you have, yay, the demo doesn't work. Uh, maybe. Yes, I mean, I don't know, That's, we don't know yet. No, but it, 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 it headwrecks everything to a DPS, but uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. That, so you see that there's a few half edges to polish, but. Uh, yeah, that's just the, the default HTML that some, somehow came from Apache, but it's actually running Nginx. 
Okay. Uh, I, I think the problem is that we are uh, we are not uh, we are reusing IDs, so I deleted all the test data I had yesterday. So we think well, but at least you can trust me that it works based on the initial demo here. So what you did there is also here. It's all the same code. Everything is okay. Is it the same? You'll be able to use this from small screens. So if you are using a tablet or a cell phone, you can also do your thing there. Yeah, I think that's it. So we are, it's the streaming flux and we have uh, to fix these things. I, I think the problem is that we are reusing the IDs and we should not be doing that. Okay. Now, talking about the future. Okay, we have a reasonable amount of time. So, next steps, obviously we have to upload this to Debian. Uh, I have the packaging mostly done. I just need to figure out a uh, better way of not having the web interface running at all times and use socket activation and that kind of stuff to start the service and also a secure way of letting users do the first access. So if a SSH tunnel or something, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we also need to improve the web applications policy. I uh, knew, I think just after he became DPL or just before, I don't know, he added me as a, to the ALIAT project to work on that, but I didn't have any time to do that yet. We have to, I mean, uh, Thiago's graduation project is going to be related to this, so we are trying to figure out what things we should mandate applications to have, and what are the common patterns when you want to configure applications in a consistent way, and then I think that's going to help with that, and hopefully, I think that's, quite a nice graduation project if, if you can write the Debian appli web application policy. I think that's, I, I, I would give you a degree for that. Uh, and I, I also integrate more packages, so you saw we only have four, on clouds, uh, WordPress, um, static site, email. I think we have Redmine mostly working, but uh, there's a, there's patches pending for Passenger and Nginx, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, also, in, uh, we need to figure out a way to easy, easily bootstrapping. Uh, it's mostly just, it will be mostly installing the packages, but then again, for non-technical users, you don't, it's not so easy to just uh, log in with SSH to your server and install a package. Also, providing pre-built images. Uh, just we just have an uh, image of checking side should be able to do everything that you need and then figure out how to get that to people uh, other ideas is being able to spawn yourselves in the cloud with one click in a reasonably secure way and also of course it's even maybe even more important than in the cloud is to have pre-built images for common low-cost hardware hardware so we'll definitely be talking to the freedom box people I just didn't do that because before this week, this project is with pretty much Vaporware, and I didn't know to ask people to consider Vaporware. So now that's proper software, we can start to talk. Uh, so how we can help? I hope you all want to help. You see that there's lots of work. Those, those items there that I mentioned are not easy at all. We do need collaborators. Because I, I also do a few other things, and uh, I'm not able, I'm probably not able to spend all my uh, spare time on this. First, you, you can, we, we want you to request your package to be added, so you may, if you maintain a web application and you want it to be added, please talk to us. Uh, you can open an issue on GitLab, and as soon as I upload to, uh, to as soon as the package gets into the archive, you can also use the BTS, we don't care. We'll be uh, looking at both places. Uh, we also have other ways of uh, helping. Usability testing is going to be very important if you want people with non-technical skills to be able to use it. We, we will need lots of that. 
uh, bug reports, documentation as well. So I don't know how much of the how much of the aspects related to the difficult stuff like DNS, SSL, and other of those things we are going to be able to abstract away from users. So we will be able, to, we will be needing to explain that to, to the users. So documentation is going to be a really big thing here. Also, we will have translations. I'm, <coughs> I'm writing the code with mock uh, get text support. So we have PO files for you guys to translate. Of course, I'll take code and patches. I love to have code reviews, uh, ideas on how to handle the difficult stuff, DNS, SSL, email. We, we have the infrastructure working. We just need help with the best way to, to solve the difficult things like anti-spam, checking signatures, making sure that emails don't get on the spam boxes of the people they are intending to and all that kind of things. And our security audits are gonna be very important. So we want, we want the, the, the configuration management code that we have to set up the system in a way that's going to be safe for users and in a way that's going to ease uh, upgrading and make sure people can benefit from the incredible security support we, are, we already have in Debian. Uh, I didn't ask anything, ab anyone about this yet, but I think we can use the resources that are already there and mostly not used. So the Debian Web Apps IRC channel has three people the last time I checked. So if you want to discuss this, I would encourage you to join there. And also the Debian Web Apps list on lists.debian.org is also mostly dead. So I think we can go there if we People start get, getting annoyed by us. We can just find another place, but I think we should just reuse what's there already. We are six now. Okay, we are six now. That's better. And now I'm happy to take any questions or suggestions you guys might have. <coughs> So hi, first of all, thanks of all for taking the lead on this work, which as, as I think you know, I think is very important for the future of Debian and for user freedom in general. Then I have a question. I think part of the mess we have around packaging web applications and more generally making it easier for users to install them is not only our fault, but is also some kind of uh, lack of diligence in upstreams. And Debian in the past have been giving guidelines to our upstreams on how to package software, on how to make software easy to package, but in general how to better and already management and all this kind of stuff. So for instance, we have wiki.debian.org slash upstream guide, which is full of very useful suggestions for our upstreams. So I was wondering if you were also consider, considering as part of this work to actually propose guidelines for upstreams of web applications to actually make the situation better, not only for us, but mm -hmm. for everyone else. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a very nice thing to have. And there are a few specific things that are specific to web applications, like people adding tons and tons of dependencies and then uh, requiring almost 250 packages to have GitLab in the archive, which are, we are quite close to have, actually. But then we had like a one or two years of packaging dependency. But yeah, I think that's, that's a a uh, good thing to do, and I take note in here. Go ahead. Hi. Um, first of all, uh, I never would believe I would I will say that, but I think that PHP is less crazy than the Ruby, uh, <laughs> Ruby on Rails uh, packaging. Um, so th the question is, um, um, I still consider you our Debian Ruby God, and I love the gem to Deb. Do you plan to tie these two works somehow together so we can get something like GitLab packaged in semi-automated way by pulling the gems, running gem to Deb on top of that, something like that? Is, is this something ever crossed your mind, or, or is this completely, well, crazy? Uh, I think we are, uh, okay, so on PHP, Ruby is crazier than the PHP, then that depends on your de definition of crazy. 
uh, and uh, on GitLab. So we have most of the dependencies package now. I think we are missing um, five to ten packages. So uh, and I, Pravin, who is working a lot of this, he he actually got GitLab company to fund his work for two months to work on that. So. I would hope to get a proper GitLab package very, very soon. Uh, if that, I think that's going to happen, but it, it did cross my mind doing a, a Debian package with all dependencies inside, installed by some crazy means. But then I don't think at this point it's useful anymore to do that. I did that for work with RPM packaging, so I have one big package which is all GitLab dependencies in one RPM, and then another package that's just ju just GitLab and depends on that, You're using Bundler, all, the, all that stuff. It mostly works, but of course you have one package with I don't know how many libraries inside and you don't want that for the proper archive. But I, I think we will do, we will have a proper GitLab package very soon. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, Backport that to Jesse as well. Well, so additional question. So uh, how do you deal with the uh, where strict requirements usually, well, in, inside the gem file <coughs> and, and the often breakages in the API and uh, in, the, in the Ruby, between even minor Ruby mm -hmm. packages versions because, uh, well, I'm sure you remember Ruby Rack which completely broke between 1.4 and 1.5, I think, or something like that. So this is still a problem, that, right? That doesn't quite happen as often as it did in the past. So the problem with Rack in the past was that Rails actually used the, some things from Rack that not, was not supposed to use, and then when the new Rack got in the archive, then Rails broke. But uh, today the problem is not so uh, big, and also, uh, what, what I do in Redmine is I just patch out the strict requirements. Usually, the requirements that upstream specify in their metadata are more strict than necessary. So, and uh, upstream library maintainers are not so crazy anymore these days. So, it mostly works. Of course, there are corner cases, but uh, in, in Redmine, I do it. I do it in Vagrant. I relax lots of dependencies, and it mostly works. Um, a related question: Have you think the other way around? Is it would it be easy to make Debian packages with uh, your package system? Um, is that just a matter of running the cookbook uh, in the post tense to get um, a Debian package? Um, because I like to have all the source from Debian where it's checked and maybe reproducible soon and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should do that. I think uh, the Debian package should be good enough to be used on, the, on their own if you are a system administrator and you know what you're doing. Because if you do that, if we start doing uh, packages using stuff that's not the standard packaging tools that Debian has, then you are creating non-Debian, and we don't want to create non-Debian. We want to put the existing Debian to good use. And just a note, there is a, su such a thing as a web app uh, Debian policy. It's a bit hidden, but there yeah, is yeah, one. There is one, but it, it's, it's outdated and nobody follows it. So the point is right. making sure people know about it and that people follow it. And that if you, you, we, we file bugs if they don't. So this is maybe slightly along the lines of the last question. So as I understand it, you have the, the metadata and this Ruby cookbook stuff. This is your chef cookbook stuff, that's, that's all in the shack Git repository. Yes. So you've got the metadata, effectively you've got the, the metadata and the glue for every one of these web apps is defined there, and so there's a, a dependency then on a particular versions of, presumably when you do that it automatically runs apps or something to install the package. Um, so I can see why that is a natural design. Um, have you considered the alternative, which is to allow packages or perhaps meta packages to provide the metadata and the glue themselves? Um, and whether that would be better or worse from a 
I yeah, don't know, who's uh, maintaining it point of view and a practical point of view. Okay. Yeah, that's possible. So, as I said, the, the cookbooks are completely decoupled from the code. So, if you just install the cookbooks to the right place, the, the two will see them and you'll be able to use them. Right. But of course, then you need to install the package that has the cookbook in it first. So. Yes. Uh, right. So whereas at the moment you have your shack package which contains all the cookbooks. So I assume the, the shack thing itself with the cookbooks is that has a Debian packaging, yes. right? Right. It is. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, it will be in the archive and it will be maintained as any other package. And then the, the idea is that uh, when we get a stable release, we don't need to change the metadata and then the applications will be able to just upgrade themselves in a reasonable way. And then we, th there is the concern of what happens if the application upgrades and then the configuration management code that handles that needs to change. So the idea is that if, you are, if we are in unstable, that's going to change in a way that we are going to fix it. But then w once you have a stable release, then we will try to make sure that that configuration management code works for the version and, and stable, and then we, we can maintain that. Right, and there will be some kind of upgrade path for existing users, right? Yes. Excellent. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think there should be time for one more question or so. Um, do, you, uh, do you have any plans for interactions between applications? For example, um, thinking of a client for, uh, uh, for vCards or a client for a calendar that might uh, rely on uh, another service that's, that's doing the, the basic calendar infrastructure. Um, will there be dependencies between those Shack applications? And how would, one, how would one configure that so that one application just finds the other application? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can do that in Chef, and I would, I would assume you can do that in other configuration management tools. So, uh, and also you can have one application that's actually several packages. So you, you don't need to have a one-to-one -one mapping. So your calendaring <coughs> thing can depend on everything that it needs. Yes, but then that, that, that service might need to be used by other, pack other applications as well. Okay. Yeah, that can be done. <laughs> we, we just we are just not there yet with okay. actual need, but uh, as soon as the needs need start uh, comes up, we we can think, think think of a way of doing it. Thank you. <coughs> um, I, I forgot one thing. I wanted to thank you for this work, and if you need something uh, related to DNS, just just ping me. I might have an okay. idea or two. Thank you. <laughs>